and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Epiphany, the fourth Sunday in January. It is a pleasure to be back with you after being gone for a couple weeks with COVID. Uh, but I have a ton of announcements, so hold tight and I will go through them. First is we did have a women's coffee gathering this last week. It was very well attended. We had 13 people here. Um, so we look forward to the next one. I know that there will be an announcement coming about that. The session will meet today after worship in the sanctuary um, about 10.50, so take 15 minutes to get a cup of coffee, uh, visit with friends, and then gather back in the sanctuary um, for our session meeting. Uh, Lee has an announcement about our rose for this morning. Thanks, Jessica. The rose at the front of the sanctuary is to welcome the newest member of Sunrise, Grace Julie Kuzinski, who was born January 7th to Jake and Erica. Mom, Dad, and Big Sister are all here today. So it's Grandma and Grandma and Great Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> what a blessing. We look forward to meeting her when it is safe for her to be out and about. Um, our annual congregational meeting will be held after worship next Sunday. If you have an annual report that has not yet been turned in, please do so. Tomorrow, Monday, is the deadline. Um, we are just waiting for uh, the last of our financial reports, and then we are going to hit print. So if you have anything that you would like to have turned in or reported for the 2021 year, please get it in to Sherry by tomorrow. Um, thank you for all of your prayers and cards and texts and emails while we were sick at our house. Um, we uh, have um, sort of had varying experiences from Raul, who is asymptomatic, uh, to me, who got knocked on my rear uh, by COVID. Um, I am about a week and a half past contagion, so I could uh, sneeze on you or lick you and you would probably be just fine. <laughs> I don't plan to do either of those things, um, but I, I, am, I am also weak as a kitten. Um, but I am, so I appreciate all of the prayers and, and thoughts that you, that you have sent our way. Um, and speaking of, um, I have noticed that when I stand for long periods of time, I get really shaky. So I am going to be sitting for the hymns today, um, just to sort of get myself back. To full strength. So um, if it says stand and you see the pastor sitting, please ignore that. Um, let's see. Uh, so, and many of you have asked how Jesse has fared during COVID. That has been a, a big concern at our house and has been a concern for the last 20 months, really. Um, Jesse went through uh, COVID really just fine, at least from the outside. We had some lab work done on Friday, so we're um, waiting to see how that comes back, but if the outside matches the inside, then God is good, and we have really um, affaired this quite well. And so we appreciate all your prayers and concerns, especially for him. As, as um, immune compromised kiddos are sort of a, a, a gamble during this time of COVID. I also know that many of our families here have had COVID at the same time that I have been out. I have heard about a couple of folks, but I'm just now sort of catching up with the prayer chain. So if you are sitting here and know of people who are sick or if you're watching online and are sick this morning, um, please let me know. We would like to keep track of you and how you are doing. Um, but uh, we need that information for you so that we can, can reach back out. I think that's all the announcements I have for this morning. Are there any others before we begin our service? Yeah, John. We had a dozen more people come in when you started your announcements. Um, can you repeat the more important ones? Or how are we going to start them? You know, started early, I think, Jesse. Did I start early? That's a, that's a new thing. <laughs> um, session after, after church in the sanctuary, annual congregational meeting next week. Uh, Rose uh, for Grace up here. And with that, let us prayerfully enjoy our prelude as we come into our time of worship.
you join me in our call to worship? From God comes my salvation. For God alone, my soul lives in silence. God alone is my rock and my salvation. God is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. Let us pray. Forgiving God, we repent of all the ways we turn from you. You call, but we do not listen. You show us your path, but we prefer our own way. Forgive us, heal us, and lead us back to you, that we might show mercy to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, our God is Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, all-seeing and all-knowing and all-loving. Beloved of God, thrill and rejoice in God's goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. First reading this morning comes from Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the earth. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can de detect their errors? Clear me from the hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So ends the reading of the first word. Our first hymn for this morning is number 275. <laughs>
Our second reading this morning comes from the prophet Nehemiah, one that we don't encounter all of the time. You'll notice that the verses uh, in here sort of skip around. We have 1 through 3, 5 through 6, 8 through 10. If you look them up in the Bible while I'm reading, uh, you don't have to, but um, basically it skips some really long and hard to pronounce names. Uh, this is what they uh, the, talk about the genealogy of the people who were there that day. So if you're wondering what verses are skipped out, they're, uh, they're skipping out the names of the crowd. That's, that's about what we lose when we, when we skip those. So hear these words as they come from the prophet Nehemiah. You'll see there's an overlap here with Psalm 19 that we just read. All the people gathered together in the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered him, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and the scribe and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So sort of an odd passage that we get here. It's not very often that we have a public reading of the law, though we do get that, of course, uh, in parallel texts where Jesus goes to the temple and is reading in the law in the temple. So what we have here is we have this community of Israelites who have been under foreign rule, who now have their own governor in Nehemiah. They have their own prophet in Ezra, they have their own governor in Nehemiah. But these are people who have been living essentially under foreign law for generations. And Ezra brings out the scrolls and stands in the front of the people and reads the commandments to them. It says, from early morning to midday, imagine standing out in the middle of the town square, listening to someone read the Torah for four to five hours. I don't know that I would have lasted that long. But the people were intrigued. They were interested. And they were invested because they are at a place in which they need to rebuild the laws of their community. And what's happening here is that Ezra, through the reading of the law, is giving them a way to go forward. So, that, um, so what happens is these people have had these foreign laws that they have been subjected to, and the laws are not always fair. We know that human laws are sometimes great and sometimes bad, 
And now what the people are receiving are what they see as God's laws for the community. And it's a sort of boundary setting to say, here, here are the ways in which you can now live together in a community that is equitable and just. Because the foreign rulers didn't always act justly and didn't always act fairly. And so when we come into the story of Nehemiah, why the people are so intrigued by the reading of the law is because they are, are hearing it really in a new way. Now, I don't know about you, but most of the time, when we think about, or when I think about the commandments, we think about them being a, a sort of a box, right? A box in which we fit. These are, the th these are our boundaries. These are the things that we have to do in order to be right with God. We are supposed to um, obey God on the first half of the commandments, and we're supposed to not hurt people on the second half of the commandments. And they're, they're often seen as kind of confining or constricting, but instead, what the people in, the, in this story from Nehemiah are understanding is that rather than being confining or constricting, these laws are comforting and freeing because they're setting a community standard. So especially when we talk about like the last five of the laws, but when we start with the do nots, right? Do not steal, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not lie, do not covet. You know, those are, those are uh, often viewed as punitive law. And when we come to Jesus, oftentimes we talk about them in punitive ways, that these are the law boundaries. Um, but in this story in Nehemiah, these are really good things for the community. And really they're good for us, too. We don't often think about them that way. But we live in a community in which we abide by these laws in order that we can have the freedom to live in community with one another. If we are always afraid that our neighbors will steal from us, then we live in a sense of paranoia. If we have neighbors who could murder us or kill us without any repercussion from the government or the community, then we never feel safe. If someone could lie about us in court at any given moment, which we know our justice system, this happens, but, but we have standards in which we say you can't lie in court uh, because this is a protection for the community. So when the people from Nia, in this story from Nehemiah are hearing this, they're hearing it in a way that really gives them freedom to live their lives in community together with everyone having the same set of rules. That's why they're so intrigued. That's, that's why they're standing there listening for four and five hours at a time. Because there is this comfort and even joy in knowing that everyone is going to abide by the same. It becomes, instead of a law in which it's punitive, right, you get in trouble for not doing them, instead it is life-giving that if everyone does this together, then we are better as a community. We are better as a whole. It is a move from, I, I wrote anarchy on the slide, but it's, that's not quite right, but it's, it's this rule, it's this move from like a, a dictatorship government where they are under foreign rule and they don't but they aren't able to set their own community rules to a place in which they can say these are the rules for our community set by our God that are going to be our standards for them. It 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 um this movement from constraining mentality to a life giving mentality <coughs> is really two sides of the same coin. 
the actions aren't the same, but the intention is different. Um, you know, look at, look at these things that you can't do. You can't go out and murder someone. You can't commit adultery. You can't steal. You can't lie about someone. You can't covet. Um, and, and those, are, those are, are sometimes seen as constraining by outside community. But really, in, in the Jewish community and in the Christian community, instead, we should look at these as a freedom from harm. That when everyone agrees to these rules, these shared rules, that we won't murder, that we won't covet, we won't, won't commit adultery, we won't steal, we won't lie about one another, then it gives us a freedom from harm that allows us to live our best lives. When Jesus comes in the New Testament and talks about the ways in which the law should be interpreted, we know that Jesus says, you know, the greatest of the laws is to love God and to love our neighbor. And that's a reflection of what we're seeing here. That when God's laws are lifted up in a way in which they are joyful, then they bring a peace to the community in which we live. Now we all know that human laws have injustices, and that not always the things end up as fairly as we would like them to be. But we look to God's laws here, just as the people in Nehemiah did, as ways, as a prototype to live our lives in community together, making choices to follow these laws in order that we may have freedom of community to live together in peace and reconciliation. Honoring God, honoring the laws that God has set forth, upholds human life and dignity and respect and allows us to live in joy and peace with one another. So that's the story of me and Hannah for today. Thanks be to God. As we come into our time of offering, we remember, we remember that God is our rock and our fortress. Let us celebrate our salvation by fearlessly giving back a portion of what we have already had given to us. Thanks be to God.
kings shall come to your light, and rulers to the brightness of your dawn. By the compelling radiance of your spirit, draw us near, reveal your truth, and teach us faithful obedience to your word. Amen. If you'll stay standing for our next hymn, it is number 744. I think this may be a new song for us. I was going to play it through um, one time all the way through. It's uh, about four short verses. So Kim will play it through one time and then we will join together in singing. <laughs> As we come into our time of prayer for this morning, what joys and concerns would you share with the community? should have repeated that. Um, um, Leanna asked for prayers for her friend Teresa, whose cancer has metastasized prayers of comfort for her. Marcia asked for prayers for her friend Beth upon the death of her mother. Thank you. I hope that I am a joy to be back. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I deeply appreciate your prayers. You just have Thanks, Um, first for Dixie's sister-in-law, who has had shoes for a couple of months and now is going through COVID. So, sounds like a long, long time. Right. Yes, for the baby Grace. For Ruby's brother, he lost him on my first week. Thanks, I hear that. For the death of Willie's uh, brother's wife. Attended a conference in Helena this last week with like six different agencies that provide therapy for psychological problems, physical problems, cardiovascular problems, and immunity problems are going broke. The problems are rising so fastly that, that they're running out of money, they're working their people to death. One agency is closed down completely because it can't function anymore. It doesn't have the, wealth, the resources. Let's pray for those people that we, we need to build the capability to provide therapy for the harms that 
Prayers for therapy groups and support agencies that help people with mental health. Church and our community. Thank you, God. Richard. Uh, thanks, uh, Richard. Indeed, thanks be to God that we are able to gather together as a community. Seeing no others, would you join me in the response of prayer, which is printed in our bulletin? God of new visions, we pray for people highly placed in power that they may focus their eyes on you. And we pray for the lowly victims of power that they may also focus their eyes on you. We pray for those who bless with their lips that curse with inward thoughts, including ourselves. We pray for those who are ill and face the end of life. Give them the gift of prayer, that they may pour out their hearts to you. We pray for those who face uncertainty in life, financial uncertainty, health uncertainty, and uncertainty of circumstances. Enter into these lives, offering sure confidence and hope. We pray for the church universal. Let us continually turn toward your will and work towards your reconciling love. We offer these prayers to you in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us rise and join our voices together in our closing hymn.
remember that you are God's child who is dearly loved. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.